Welcome to the exciting world of Nitro RC Boating. Over the next few minutes, we'll show you how to ready your Nitro Hammer for operation and give you some handy tips for starting your new engine. And it all starts with preparing the radio. The transmitter that controls your model requires power in the form of eight AA alkaline batteries. To install the batteries, turn over the transmitter and remove the battery cover. Insert the batteries as shown in the battery compartment, making sure their polarity is correct, and replace the cover. Next, install the transmitter antenna. Simply insert it into the hole on top of the transmitter and screw it into place. Then, switch on the transmitter. Check the LED on the front of the radio. The red light should glow steadily. If it begins to blink, you need to install fresh batteries. Remove the hatch from the hull by removing the securing clip. Then, remove the radio box lid by removing its securing clip. Now you have access to the radio compartment. Install four AA batteries in the receiver battery holder. Be sure to check their direction for proper polarity and replace the battery holder in the radio box. Replace the radio box lid and clip. The antenna for the receiver is a length of wire. To install it, remove the twist tie and gently straighten the antenna by running it through your fingers. Push the antenna tube through the antenna mounting hole until it is visible inside the hole. Then feed the free end of the wire through the antenna tube until it comes out the other end. Pull the antenna tube out slightly, making sure it is secure in the rubber grommet as shown. Turn on the boat switch. Check to see if both servos operate correctly. Turning the wheel left or right controls the rudder. The steering trim knob adjusts the center point of the rudder. Use this adjustment to keep the boat tracking straight. The dual rate adjustment on top of the transmitter controls the amount of rudder travel. Rudder travel can be increased or decreased. Increased travel means a tighter turning radius. As you increase your driving skills, you may wish to increase the rudder travel. The trigger controls the engine throttle. Pulling the trigger opens the carburetor, which increases throttle speed. When you let go of the trigger, the boat idles. You can adjust idle speed by using the throttle trim knob on your transmitter. Turn off your boat and replace the hatch using the securing clip you removed earlier. Finally, turn off your transmitter. You are now ready to start the engine. To start and tune your engine, you'll need a glow starter, fuel filler bottle, and fuel. RC model engines have very specific fuel requirements. They use a type of fuel called glow fuel or nitro fuel. It is not the same as what goes into your family car. Never fill your tank with gasoline. For optimal performance, use Red Alert 20% racing fuel. Your engine's carburetor uses a high speed and low speed needle valve to adjust the fuel flow into the engine. The high speed needle controls the engine's fuel to air ratio at half to full throttle. Turning it clockwise allows less fuel into the engine. That's called leaning it out. As you lean out your engine, it runs faster and smoother, but leaning it out too much will cause the engine to overheat. Turning the high-speed needle counterclockwise allows more fuel into the engine, which richens the fuel mixture. You'll use these adjustments when you break in your engine. The low-speed needle arrives factory set and adjusts the fuel-air mixture at half throttle or less. In general, it determines how well the engine idles. It may require adjustment, but don't make any adjustment to the low-speed needle until your engine is fully broken in. For the longest life and best performance from your engine, you must break it in. This helps all internal parts wear together properly. It takes only three or four tanks of fuel. Then, your engine is ready for high-speed running. Now let's get the engine started. Before you turn on your transmitter and boat, make sure that no one else is using the same radio frequency that you are. Your radio frequency is identified on the front of your transmitter. Check to make sure that it is operating properly. Next, fill your tank with fuel. You can make the job quick and easy by using a Duratrax Quick Pit fuel bottle. Next, turn the high-speed needle clockwise until it just stops. Don't over-tighten it or it could damage the needle. Now, turn the needle counterclockwise two full turns. A needle setting of two turns out is best for your first run. 
Next, prime the engine using the button located on the fuel tank. When you begin to see fuel enter the carburetor from the fuel line, press the primer button one more time. Your engine should now be properly primed. Before starting the engine, make sure that everything is clear of the rotating prop and set the carb for fast idle by using the throttle trim knob on the transmitter. At this point, you're ready to attach the glow starter, such as Hobbyco's Hot Shot 2. The glow starter supplies the glow plug heat required to start the engine. Securely attach your fully charged glow starter to the engine by pressing it onto the glow plug and twisting it into place. Hold the boat securely with one hand while pulling the engine's recoil starter with the other. Use short, quick movements. Don't pull it all the way out as you would with a lawnmower. That could damage the recoil unit. Once the engine starts, give it 10 seconds to warm up before you remove the glow starter. Be extra careful to avoid the spinning propeller. Now you're ready to start the break-in process. Replace the hatch cover and securing clip before launching the nitro hammer into the water. Be sure to extend the antenna, then use a forward motion to launch your nitro hammer as demonstrated here. Your engine should sound like this. It will seem slow and sluggish at first, but that's normal. After running at that rich sound for almost a full tank of fuel, it's time to start leaning out the engine. Bring the boat back to shore before you run out of fuel. For your second tank of fuel, lean the mixture slightly by turning the high-speed needle clockwise just one-eighth of a turn. You should notice an increase in engine performance. After running through the second tank of fuel, fill your tank a third time. Turn the high-speed needle clockwise another one-eighth of a turn. Then watch and listen while the engine runs. It should now be near peak performance. This is the sound you're aiming for. The engine is now running at its optimum level. Does your engine sound like this? If so, it means the high-speed needle is closed too far. The engine isn't getting enough fuel. It's running too lean. Concentrate on the sounds. That's too rich. That's too lean. Perfect. That's the sound you want. When your engine sounds like this, you found the best high-speed needle setting. You may have to make slight adjustments to maintain that performance as atmospheric conditions change. The low-speed needle has been set at the factory, but if the engine doesn't idle smoothly or wants to quit at idle, it may need some adjustment. See your instruction manual for information on how to properly set the low-speed needle. If you ever have trouble starting your engine or keeping it running, here's a good troubleshooting tip. Remove the glow plug and make sure it still glows brightly. If not, you may need to replace the plug or charge your glow starter. Also, be sure to follow your manual's advice for proper engine maintenance. After each day's run, it's a good idea to remove the hatch and drain any water that may have entered the hull during running. Now you know how to tune and maintain your nitro hammer properly. No more waiting. It's time for you to hit the water. Good luck and great boating.